Hello guys, welcome back to another episode from Learning with Isha. So in the previous videos, we've been talking about the applications of biotechnology, right? We spoke about tissue culture. Today we continue the series and we start talking about the another applications of biotechnology in the field of agriculture, right? So in agriculture, as I told you before, the use of pesticides is a big menace. It's a big problem. We need to cut it down, right? So a natural way of doing it might be to make my plants naturally resistant to what? Pests, right? If my plants are naturally resistant to pests, I don't need to add any pesticide. So that helps what? It helps save the land degradation. It also reduces the cost for the farmer. So now we are trying to engineer plants that are naturally resistant to pests, okay? So today we are going to study two such ways. In the first part, we are talking about how the Bt toxin gene has been used to do that and the second part in the next video it would be about RNA interference right so I spoke about a Bt toxin gene what is this Bt toxin gene okay to understand that we need to understand that a bacteria called bacillus thuran giensis okay this is a bacterium okay this is a bacterium that produces a toxin called the bt toxin it produces a toxin called the bt toxin and the gene for this toxin would naturally be called the bt toxin gene let's understand both these things first of all this bacterium is a gram positive bacteria that lives in the soil. So it's called a soil dwelling bacteria. Okay. Dwelling means living. Okay. So this is a soil dwelling gram positive bacteria. Okay. What is this toxin? It is an endotoxin. In fact, it's a delta endotoxin. Okay. Is this produced by bacteria all the time? No. Only during a very specific phase of its life. Only during sporulation. Okay, only during sporulation, Bacillus thuringiensis would produce a toxin called the Bt toxin. Okay, so this Bt toxin is a crystal protein. Okay, it is a protein crystal. And the gene for this crystal protein is called the Cry gene. What you need to note very carefully is the difference between the capital C r y and the small c r y okay it's a big mistake that students make and you need to know see this capital c r y is the gene okay it is the gene for the crystal protein okay and the small c r y is the protein itself cri cry comes from the crystal word crystal okay so the capital C is the gene, whereas the small c is the protein. Okay, fine. Now, what are we doing? We're doing what is that we are cloning out this gene. Okay, we're getting this gene out of this bacteria. So this gene is cloned from the bacteria and expressed in what naturally? Expressed where? In the plant because it is the plant that we want to become. We want the plant to become what? Insect pest resistant okay so it is expressed in the plant excellent so now my plant is producing this gene this crystal root okay so where has this process commercially been done okay this process has been commercially done in cotton plant in corn plant in potato plant, in the soya bean plant, in tomato and plants like this. Also I would like to tell you that this thing is called a biopesticide. Why a biopesticide? Okay, because it is a biological gene that is making a pesticide. So this is a biopesticide. Now, in the next part, we are going to understand the processes for Bt. Now, we begin talking 
in specific about bt cotton okay so the cotton plant naturally is attacked frequently by three group of pests okay the pests belonging to lepidopterans coleopterans and the dipterans category okay these are the natural pests of cotton please mind that this is not the bt cotton plant okay bt cotton plant will be made so that these pests will not be able to harm the cotton plant okay but these are the natural pests lepidopterans include tobacco budworm and army coleopterans includes beetles okay and dipterans includes flies and mosquitoes okay now we want to make the cotton plant resistant to these pests so like i told you earlier we'll take the cry gene and put it in the plant the crystal protein will be made and now my cotton plant will be called the bt cotton plant okay now my bt cotton plant will be resistant to pests which pests these three group of pests okay because they are the frequent pests that attack a cotton plant okay now which crystal genes genes for which crystal proteins would be put in the plant depend on two factors okay the first factor is the crop plant itself and the second factor is the targeted pest okay so which pest is targeting which plant will decide which type of cry gene would be expressed in the plant okay let's say cry 1 ac gene and cry 2 ab gene would be put in a plant that is attacked by ballworms okay if corn borer is the attacker cry 1 ab gene would be taken out from the bacterium and put in the plant okay so now in the next part let's look at the mechanism of action of this crystal protein now we start talking about the mechanism how is this crystal protein affecting the insect pest resistance how is it making the bt cotton plant resistant to the pest that i told you okay so what happens in the first step is that we obtain the gene for this the cry gene the bt toxin gene is obtained from bacillus thuringiensis okay and this is expressed in my cotton plant okay cotton plant because we're talking about bt cotton had we been, been talking about bt soya bean it would have been the soya bean plant and the gene would have been different okay now guys what is the gene it is a piece of dna okay it is a piece of dna so now what is this dna forming the dna forms mrna okay the messenger rna and that forms a protein the process here is called transcription and here it is called translation okay fine now what is the dna here it is the gene it is the small c r y cry gene with a small c okay now the protein is the capital c r y crystal protein okay what is this crystal protein now doing in the plant okay that is important to understand a question that might come to your mind is that this crystal protein is an endotoxin okay then why is this endotoxin not harming the plant okay the reason behind that is very interesting nature has a buffer for almost everything okay so what is happening here is this crystal protein is produced as a prototoxin as a prototoxin okay see guys to understand any word we need to break it down into its components and mostly it tells me what this word means proto means primitive okay and toxin because this is an endotoxin so the toxin in its inactive form will be called what the prototoxin protozoa what does it mean those animals zoa means animals proto means primitive animals okay so this is the prototoxin it is produced in an inactive form 
how is this toxin activated well my pathogen is going to come and happily feed on my bt cotton plant my pest comes thinks oh god it's a normal cotton plant i'll get away with it no but we have engineered something we have a bt cotton plant all set to fight with this pest okay what happens it ingests the crystal protein okay now how is this crystal protein activated okay the ph of the gut of the insect take a guess is it alkaline or is it acidic well it's alkaline okay so in this alkaline ph the prototoxin will be converted into the active form of the toxin the crystal of the protein solubilizes okay the protein is activated now my protein is active okay now we need to understand how this active pro uh, crystal protein is going to kill my insect okay so this active crystal protein will bind to the mid gut epithelial cells of insect okay and what is it going to cause it causes the uptake of water swelling and if the cell swells beyond the point there is a limit up to which the cell membrane has elasticity after which it's going to lyse the cell is going to break apart okay there is going to be a cell lysis so the contents of the cell were previously inside this the cell lyses the cell bursts open everything comes out everything leaks out so my pathogen dies this pest will die okay so this is the mechanism in which we are providing resistance in the bt cotton plant okay now this was the first way in the next video we are going to talk about a slightly little complicated topic but easy to understand if you go through with me in the next video okay it's called rna interference thank you